to you, please. Hey there, this is Theo bringing you another KSP video. This is part two of my rescue and salvage from the surface of Duna. In part one, I showed you guys my landing and attempt to get Joe Bro off the surface with his cockpit. If you didn't watch that attempt, spoiler alert, I was not successful. So I thought this time I would redo the mission, but I would show you the full build and launch and all of that. So as usual, I'm going to go ahead and speed up the footage. This is four times normal speed, so I don't want to waste too much of your time usually these builds could be very meticulous you gotta plan the stages you gotta run through your your mental checklist so you're not forgetting anything and um and as usual you start with the the end in mind so in this case what do i need to return to kerbin and that's going to be one little pod for joe bro to sit in and um obviously parachute something to slow my my re-entry into the atmosphere and then there you see that the grabbing unit, the little grabbing unit on the top, that's where his uh, Mark I inline cockpit is going to attach. And um, because I'll have a little extra mass on the top of the craft, I'm using a larger fuel tank on the bottom that will re-enter with me. And that's going to ensure the little Mark I cockpit doesn't hit the atmosphere first. There'll be enough mass on the bottom of the craft to keep the heat shield down. And uh, it'll also be hopefully empty by the time I... I do enter the atmosphere so um so yeah it won't be su super heavy in case it is i've got some landing legs plenty of parachutes so that's that's the top craft that'll be coming back to kerbin next you see i'll build the um the transfer stage as well as the uh the new lander and this and, and I, i've started a blank a blank craft so that it'll be uh, cleaner and easier to, to build the lander i'm gonna try a different design this time if you watched part one, you noticed the uh, robotics that I've tried to use. They, they worked as intended and were a lot of fun, but um, I, I find the robotics in the game are very finicky, especially the smaller components. I, I suspect part of my problem was the smaller cylinders and hinges. They just don't have enough power. So when I'm uh, leaving the surface of Duna, uh, the, the, the forces incurred on the vehicle are just too too much for those smaller robotic components to withstand so this is this time i'm going to go with much simpler and I've, as you can see I'm, I'm tempted to put the grabbing unit on the bottom of the rocket and uh, my idea was instead of opening doors and using uh, an arm or something to come out and grab the component what if i can build the rocket so that the, the entire rocket can sit on <laughs> the cockpit if i can somehow position the, the uh, joe bros cockpit directly under my rocket I can just squat, the grabbing unit would, would grab it, and I'll be able to take off from there. And there would be no moving components to to rattle and shake and move around and uh, while I'm launching. So there, you see, I'm, instead of using landing legs, I'm going to try these much larger cylinders. And they do have some dampening, so they, uh, they do function pretty well as legs for the rocket. And there you see me adjusting the, the stroke on the cylinders so that... They're not super high off the ground, but they also don't um, bottom out. So that, uh... so yeah. So now it's just time to round out the rest of the design. There you see I'll add some solar panels, batteries. I think my last craft had some issues running out of power. So hopefully this will resolve that. There's my parachutes that I'll be needing to slow down my descent when I get to Duna. Duna's atmosphere is not as thick as Kerbin's, but parachutes still help an awful lot so you don't waste fuel. Also find your craft, if it's not aerodynamic, can, can slow itself down pretty well sometimes. But uh, yeah, I'm going to go with parachutes. I need to set those so the, uh, they deploy at a much, much higher altitude. Because if you deploy too late, then they're actually not going to function. Here you see me messing with a decoupler and a structural component. I couldn't attach a decoupler to that grabbing arm, so I'm doing a little bit of clipping and cheating so the decoupler um, will detach the top rocket and um, it's not attached actually to the grabbing unit. The grabbing unit is attached to the structural tube, which you saw me clip into the bottom of the rocket. That's the only way that I can get it to work. So I guess I'll add some antenna there so that this robotic craft will land without a pilot. Don't need any of the high gain antennas or anything like that because once I get to Duna, I've got a relay network. So these little bitty antennas, even when they're not deployed, will plenty, be plenty enough to uh, 
relay also the others and, and uh, back to Duna so I can control it. So there you saw I was creating uh, um, a subcraft so that I can go back to my original vehicle and load this in. See if I can find it. It's tough. Uh, <laughs> There's a preview of, of my long lengthy list of crafts and this isn't even the first uh, computer that I've played KSP on. So I've got a, another computer with other crafts that I should probably uh, copy and load into this this uh, this one. So I have access to some of my original crafts when I first started my career mode. But there you see it fits and the uh, it's it's hitting the structural arms on that fairing there but uh, KSP is kind enough not to uh, not to allow collisions with uh, those fairing uh, brackets so there's it looks like it's clipped and it looks like it would uh, rip those side tanks off of the lander but it's not going to do that it'll pass right through the fairing there's my big transfer stage a huge tank with a rhino engine a uh, tank decoupler on the bottom of that with uh, another large tank at the bottom and there I'm just double checking my staging checking making sure the lander is going to detach after the fairings open there's my little return stage at the top now let's let's add my the rest of my first stage I'm go with the, the large engines probably end up putting some boosters on this if memory serves yep I remember um, I think part of the main issue that my first mission was not successful was I simply didn't have enough fuel in that uh, ascent vehicle uh, wasted fuel adjusting my orbit and slowing down and all of that so four big boosters that good strong first stage this should be plenty enough to get me to Duna that lander should be completely fueled so I'm going to speed up the footage to eight times now because uh, you guys will hopefully have seen a few of my launches or if you, you play KSP, you know this part. I'm just going to get it to orbit. There are my boosters. Took me a pretty high altitude, so already my fuel's looking fine. I, I was definitely over-engineered the bottom and uh, transfer stage, but like I said, I definitely just want my lander to get there fully fueled. So yeah, I've reached uh, orbit with just the... Uh, the boosters and most of the first stage haven't even jettisoned the first stage yet. I've got a nice high periapsis and apoapsis, so planning my transfer there. Uh, if you're quick, you can kind of see my um, alarm clock going off every now and then. That's because I am playing this on career mode, so um, I'm not actually... When I, when I played the mission, it wasn't all in one sitting. I built it, I put it into orbit, and did some other things when my Duna transfer came about my alarm went off I hopped to my craft there you can see uh, that was my <laughs> alarm clock going off again so uh yeah career mode we got a lot of other vessels flying around the the system doing other things so uh some sometimes i'll play in career mode for you guys sometimes i'll i'll go do a, a unique special mission on my sandbox where i don't have any alarms no other crafts flying around that i gotta worry about but uh, this is in career mode like i said i like the name joe bro and I wanted to rescue this guy. I think there are ways to to edit or rename or create your own Kerbals. But on career mode, I, I don't think there is a way. So the names you find are the names you get. And if you want to rescue someone with a name you like, you got gotta put in the work. So there you see I've made it back, made it to Duna. Lots of fuel in my transfer stage left, so my lander is gonna be fully fueled. Nice circular orbit, a polar orbit. So it doesn't matter where your Kerbal is on Duna. If you have a polar orbit, at some point, Duna will rotate underneath you and you'll reach them. But because my Kerbal is, uh, I think he's in the snow somewhere, so I need it to be on a polar orbit anyway. So there I've ditched my return stage. It's just going to float in orbit, ready for me to come back to it later. And now I'm planning my trajectory to enter... Duna's atmosphere, where Joe Bro is. Let's see. Making sure my parachutes are all set to deploy at a high altitude. I forgot to do that earlier in the vehicle assembly building. Putting all my solar panels on an action group so I can retract them when it's time. And now let's go ahead and enter the atmosphere. I'm just adjusting my approach so that I'll pass right over Joe Bro hopefully 
this is the part by the way where you'd want to be quick saving just in case things don't go your way I don't want to have to drive a really far distance on the surface of Duna if I can avoid it so time to get out of the atmosphere my craft is not very aerodynamic it's kind of spinning around yeah within 10 kilometers or so I'm, I'm okay driving sometimes if I'm uh, not in the mood I'll re reload my quick save but this will do there you see those landing legs function just just fine I think my alarm sent me back to the craft so I'm just renaming it and piddling making sure my return vehicle is good to go got my grabbing unit armed but now it's time to jump down to my rover so part one of this uh, video my original lander had the rover attached inside of it I didn't feel the need to send a new rover so I'm gonna go ahead and use the one that I sent the first time because again I'm on career mode so I had it there just doing nothing um, using my uh, time speed up trick that I, that I learned about on this mission that I didn't realize on on the surface of a planet you could speed up time usually if you're under acceleration the game doesn't let you speed up but in this case it does which I'm thankful for the craft is relatively robust I've also got some RTGs on it so you'll see all this uh, bouncing around ordinarily I'd be too too nervous that something's gonna break but uh, the things that are breakable I'm not too worried about I think I'm gonna end this <laughs> this drive with one solar panel left but I uh, don't need the solar panels they're uh, they're overkill I didn't realize how good RTGs were uh, I start using them way more now in my builds because they uh, they're reliable you can you don't need to remember to to extend them you don't need to worry about the position of the Sun or timing your missions they're constantly putting out a little bit of energy that you need for some of these smaller vehicles so the RTGs are powering this craft in the dark for me these solar panels are completely worthless so one of them already broke off not too worried about it um, this is eight times sped up and I'm still only half the distance to my lander so this was a hell of a drive in real life even with uh, speeding up see I've instead of speeding up four times I'm, I'm only going two times because uh, that last spin I was nervous the uh, cockpit was gonna explode or something was like one of the wheels would break so moving pretty slow across the surface it's also not a flat surface and with the very low gravity on Duna you don't get a lot of traction and my vehicle is just maybe poorly designed because it's uh, it's so the wheelbase is pretty short for the mass I'm trying to move around it was a pain in the butt to drive this thing I would totally redesign this rover next time if I had to do a mission like this and again I would only do a mission like this if the guy I'm trying to rescue has an interesting name because you can reject missions you don't have to accept all the contracts that they give you but Joe Bro is going to be my new all-star I think I'll do some videos with Joe Bro in the future with his adventures once he's uh, made it back to Kerbin might as well make him earn his pay make him earn this mission by sending him to do some other things plant flags on other celestial bodies in career mode that's the only way to level up Kerbals is to plant flags or orbit other celestial bodies you don't get credit for coming back to Duna so might as well go to some new places with him and I'll probably end up doing that now you see I'm making my final approach to the lander so this will be the true test of this mission and this design will the lander function with a little squat maneuver that I had planned work out and will the lander be aerodynamic and have enough fuel to get me into orbit so there you saw I was testing the squat it, it looks like it'll work just fine got a, just enough stroke hopefully to get the, uh, the at least the cockpit under the lander I don't need to get the whole rover and here I'm realizing whether it's the, the incline of the, the little hill that I'm on or the, the poor traction of the rover the, the off center of the mass or all of that stuff in conjunction it's tough to get the uh, cockpit directly under but I finally did get it and then I'm testing oh, I'm just gonna go ahead and renamed it oh. I'm glad I did a quick save so I think I had the same issue that I had from my first mission I need to set the control point to the probe at the top because as soon as I sit on the um, the cockpit it sets the cockpit as my control point for some stupid reason also I decided I needed to move the cockpit so that it's a little better uh, centered under the craft so my center of gravity is not moved too much um, 
but again there's no um, there's no moving parts there's no moving robotics so this should fly better in there much 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 better behavior that's uh, that's about as good as I could have hoped for so uh, I'm gonna go ahead and jettison my cylinders they're creating extra drag I don't need and I'm never gonna land this thing again so I won't need those cylinders and I'll try to match the um, I guess the orbit of my return vehicle but honestly I'm just so ready to get this thing into orbit I'm not too concerned if it's a pretty orbit or not I've actually got an awful lot of fuel so once I'm in orbit then I can do some inclination changes and match the orbit of my return vehicle um, also if I ran out of fuel for some reason once I'm in orbit and I can't make those inclination changes no big deal I can send a third mission with uh, another vehicle and match the orbit of my uh, of Joe Bro. Once he's in orbit, I can I can more easily get to him. I guess is what I should say. So there, I'll match my inclination, and yep, I'm in orbit now. I've made my periapsis above 50 kilometers. The atmosphere is much lower on Duna than it is on Kerbin. You don't need to go up to the 70 kilometer mark. You can. So long as you're above 50, you're out of the atmosphere, there's no extra drag on the vehicle, you'll stay in orbit forever. So, that matched my inclination. I'm just going to do another little fine tune because I do need to rendezvous. I, need, I do need to dock the crafts. You know, when you're rendezvousing and you're transferring with an EVA, you don't have to be so precise, but I'm actually going to dock the crafts with each other. So, I want my rendezvous to be as close and perfect as I can get it. So, let's see how close my final approach is going to be. I think at this point too, I'm, uh, I'm also not don't have any other alarms going off. I kind of cleared up my alarm list so that I can focus on this mission. So yep, time to extend my panels. I, I noticed my electric charger is getting low. That's a tragedy if you've done all this work and your craft runs out of power. Thankfully, I had Joe Bro on board, so uh, he could have done an EBA and I manually extended those solar panels, but didn't need to get to that point because I had a little warning left to uh, extend my panels. There's my craft. I guess I got yeah within a kilometer and a half. Usually I can get closer to that, but in this case that was that was good enough. <laughs> I'm doing a showing a view from Joe Bo, Joe Bro's perspective. Unfortunately, when I switch to that view, it also changes the uh, command point, so I can't fly from Joe Bro's perspective. I have to be uh, out you know with a view outside the vehicle. Unfortunately, but yeah, if I can if I can get my transfer stage to dock with Joe Bro's capsule that would be great I believe I leave Joe Bro in his command pod the whole time because um, there's no sense in doing an EVA and moving him and then doing the dock because once I'm docked I can transfer him from one pod to the other anyway so I'll leave him in the pod for now and if I can get the grabbing unit on my return stage so grab it yep I think I made sure my fuel was topped off because so I can rob some fuel from my lander now. I don't need it anymore. Yep, set my alarm to return back to Kerbin, and we're all set. Yep, like I said, I didn't have any other alarms to worry about, so I'm speeding up time. Now you see going by days and days and days and days. I'm also speeding time up in uh, my video editor, so... That's Joe Bro's perspective. Still in his cockpit. He's got to be running out of uh, clean air and ready to stretch his legs. Never done a return to Kerbin from a polar orbit, but it's not as ideal as a, uh, I guess, a, an orbit around the hemis the. Uh, an equatorial orbit but it'll it'll do just fine i am using the fuel in my lander to start my return because why not i've got all that fuel and those engines are much faster they're much they've got more thrust that's another reason i did that these little four vernier engines i've got plenty of fuel but they're not they're not putting out nearly the same thrust as uh, those dart engines that i had before so i'll finish my burn with these little four vernier engines try to get a Close approach to the Kerbin. And I'm adjusting because I, I guess I canceled my maneuver and I'll create a new one. Yep. Not much.
approach. Else going on? Yep. Now I've come, now I've got a close approach. So let me fine tune it to an actual rendezvous. Shoop, there it is. Go ahead and time warp till I get there. And in this case, 131 days. I think I do set an alarm. Probably go do some other business. When my alarm goes off, I'll jump back here. There you see my uh, in the top corner next to the time warp. I don't have connection to the Kerbal Space Center anymore. Joe Bro is not a pilot, I don't believe, and those four antenna are not strong enough. Something I didn't think about. Next time I'll probably put a stronger antenna on the craft. But because he's there, uh, because I have a probe core, I can I can still control the craft. Just uh, I don't have full control. And there I'm doing my adjustment. Trying to bring my periapsis closer to Kerbin. And I can't uh, I can't change my maneuvers because I don't have full control of the vehicle. Something I definitely didn't plan for. But so I'm, I'm manually fine-tuning my orbit so that my periapsis is in Kerbin's atmosphere. So there it is. My, curb, my, my periapsis is 35 kilometers, which is in the dense part of the atmosphere. I've also got a little bit of fuel left to slow myself down, but I'll be coming in maybe around 4,000 liters per second. Let's see how fast. Oh, 3,300. Got my heat shield pointed down, which is what I hoped for. And don't even need to use the rest of my fuel. Got my landing legs, my parachutes. Let's see how slow I'll come in on my final approach. There's my altimeter. Yep, 3.8, 4, 4. Yeah, very slow final approach. That was perfect. So I hope you enjoyed my rescue and salvage from the surface of Duna. There are lots of rescue videos out there. As a matter of fact, while I was uh, playing on my career mode, I'd already done half the mission. I was watching some YouTube and I got a, a, a link to Matt Lone's version where he, he rescues seven Kerbals from the surface of Duna. And I realized, man, there's a lot of rescue missions out there, but there's actually, not, I don't think a lot of salvage missions. And the salvage bit is where you actually have to return the craft, not just the Kerbinot. So um, hopefully you liked my craft design. You've got to see two of them now, one with some robotics, one with... A simpler uh, squat version thought that was a funny design and I'm, I'm glad it worked um, as always if you got something out of this video please hit that like button leave a comment if you want to see something different you want to see me do the videos a little differently please uh, leave some feedback I'm happy to, to change things up I appreciate you tuning in and I'll see you next time